Hi, I'm Anna Boyd and I'm the Genetics Operations Specialist for Beef and Lamb New Zealand Genetics. Today I'm here in the beautiful Mackenzie country to talk to you about one of my favourite beef cattle management tools, body condition scoring. I have been body condition scoring now for 10 years and I truly believe that it is easy to use, easy to learn and easy to see results within your herd. What this video will cover today is what is a body condition score, why you should body condition score, when during the year you can body condition score, and probably most importantly, how to body condition score using some of our lovely cow models here on farm. So what is a body condition score? Body condition score is a measurement of body reserves on an animal, such as fat cover, at any given time. It is scored on a scale from one to 10, with one being totally emaciated and 10 being obese. Half scores are accepted and generally we'll see animals score between a score of four and nine. Body condition scoring on a standard scale allows consistency within your herd across the different mobs on your farm as well as the differences in these groups over time, allowing for an objective measurement of body condition score or BCS differences. Now I must mention here that during scoring there is a degree of subjective assessment, meaning as humans we all see things and feel things slightly different. To counteract this, what I recommend is to use the resources available to you to accurately learn how to body condition score and then remain as consistent and accurate each time you do it. If more than one of you BCS on farm, ideally it would be the same person for an entire mob, but if it is what more than one person over the different time points, I do recommend calibrating against each other to make sure that you are scoring your cows the same. So why body condition score? Let's start with why body condition score over live weight. Body condition scoring offers many practical advantages over live weight recording. It is a more accurate predictor of body reserves and of body reserves over time. Why is this? So body condition scoring is not affected by the weight of gut and bladder fill. It is not affected by the weight of a fetus and the surrounding fluid and it is independent of frame size. So cows keep growing until six years of age and they can increase in live weight, but not in condition. You can also have a tall, framey cow that is underconditioned that weighs the same as a more moderate sized cow that has got a whole lot of condition on there. It can also be done in the paddock. This is really handy when your herd might be in the wintering blocks and you can body condition score them as they move through the gates. Today, however, I will demonstrate to you how to body condition score using your hand. What this will enable you to do though, is calibrate your visual assessment if you do wish to body condition score your cows during the winter. When should you body condition score? Now as part of the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Genetics Beef Progeny Test, we score the cows at the sites three times a year, at pre-mating, weaning and pre-calving. What we have found from our data is that the measurements are highly correlated, which means that when you choose to body condition score your cows, is largely dependent on A, when you would normally bring them through the yards, or B, when you perceive the greatest value being of being able to identify the lower conditioned cows in your herd and do something about them. Now, let's start at the beginning, pre-mating. So arguably the most critical impact of BCS is the ability of a cow to get in calf. What we have found from our years of data from the beef progeny test is that a cow ideally needs to be at a body condition score of six, preferably seven, at mating for her greatest chance of getting in calf. When you look at this on a graph, it is actually a linear relationship. So the higher the condition of the cow, 
the greater the chance she has of getting a calf. Pretty cool, right? Now, what body condition scoring at pre-mating does not allow you to do is enough time to put condition on those cows that might fall under that preferred score of 6-7. So that's where pre-mating comes in, but we'll touch on it shortly. Now, body condition scoring at weaning is generally when you would have the cows through the yards anyway. It is when your cows will generally be at their highest condition and it is the best prediction of how much fat is on the back of your herd coming into winter. Really great for winter feed planning. Now pre-carving. Body condition score at pre-carving is where I believe and have seen the biggest impact from using body condition scoring as a management tool. It is when your cows have come back from their wintering block, when they're through the yards for their animal health treatment, and it's when they have been under their greatest pressure throughout the year. So they have been on limited feed, they are in calf, and they have also withstood our lovely New Zealand wintry conditions. It is also where you will see the biggest variation in scores. Now body condition scoring at pre-carving really allows you to identify the bottom 5 to 10% of your herd in terms of condition and do something about them. Keeping in mind that we want to try to get them up to that 6, 7 by pre-mating. So what you can do with this bottom 5 to 10% is draft the girls off and, and preferentially feed them so that they are at that ideal score at, of five by calving and on a lifting plane. What we want is the cows to calve unassisted, rear a calf and get back in calf. Now what I've also found is that generally in that bottom five to ten percent are where the cows that are carrying twins tend to be. So if you do draft those off, preferentially feed them and watch them, that is also a really handy way of being able to identify the cows that are carrying twins. So for a bit of context, this is pre-carving slash post-winter. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a fantastic time to body condition score because what it does is it allows you to really identify the bottom 5 to 10 percent and draft them off to, to lift them up pre-carving if you need to. This is also the time point where you'll see the most variation because you know cows, commercial cattle are out on the hill, they all experience winter in a different manner and this is where you will find that some find it tougher. So these cows are in very good nick but you can kind of see there is some variation here. So you know clearly the second from the back here is the most condition. But now what I really encourage you to do is to actually make sure that you do touch them and score them. Today I'm going to use one of the oldest cows in our herd to be my model for the areas that you should be body condition scoring when you do body condition score a cow. So what it is, it's actually meant to be the average of seven different areas. It's on a one to ten scale, one being totally emaciated and ten being morbidly obese. So generally you will find most cows fall between say a 5 to a 9. I've personally seen one 3 but she wasn't a, a very well cow. So the spine, the short ribs, which is this area here just between her hip bone and I know it's quite hard to see but just in here, her hip bones, we know what these are. Her rump, which is actually the area between her hip bone here and her tail head, so the rump, the tail head, so this area around here, the pin bone, which is this, and then the last area is actually the thigh, or the back leg, and often you can't see this because your race is full, the cows are all jammed up against each other, but, and I will often only look at this if I'm a little bit confused between scores, it's probably what I'm going to use when I'm deciding between half scores, and I often look at it as she's walking away. So again, spine, short ribs, hip bone, rump, tail head, 
Penheads thigh. The first place or first spot that you should start on is the spine. Now the reason why is it's very easy to start here. So, and it's a very easy way to set what score to start on. So if your hand is flat, like it is at the moment, as you can see this way, then she's a six and over. If it starts to ridge like this, then she's a six under. So if you can easily feel the spine, then she's probably a six in this area. But if you're really having to push through the fat cover to feel that spine, then she's edging up to high scores. So for this cow, I really have to push to feel her spine. So I would give this spine score a seven. I then go to the short ribs. Again, it's a kind of the same situation where if you really have to grab these, to be able to feel them, then she's definitely probably a seven or above. This cow has got good cover over the hips, so again, I would call this a seven. We then go to the area between the hip bones and the tail head here. Now, you can see, so cows that do have more conditions start to actually head out in this direction. So she's still got a bit of an indent here. So I would actually still call this a seven as well. We then come to the tail head. Now what we're looking at the tail head here is actually how much condition she has around these points. So she's a bit squished here at the moment, but with cows that are in lesser condition, there's a really clear V here. So you've got to actually make sure that you're touching because here, especially curly here, can be really misleading. So I would actually call her a seven here. So this cow is a seven. For this cow here, if I start on her spine, my, my hand is flat. So she's definitely a six and above. But if I come to her short ribs, which you might be able to see better on this side, is that I can actually feel these without any pressure. Now what you'll find is with cows in lower condition, you actually start to feel the individual notches the lower condition they get, so I'm talking kind of fives and unders, these notches will actually become sharp to the touch. So I can feel that. She is a little bit skewed at the moment, so you do have to be wary of that. But I can feel those. You can see on her hip bone here, they're sharp, but they're not too sharp. So the area here between the hip bone and the tail head, as I said before, look at this indent. She actually doesn't have a lot of cover there. But what I wanted to show you with this cow is this V. And the V is starting to show because she doesn't have as much condition. So what I might do is I might just get her to walk forward a little bit. And you'll just see that there is that V here. And I think if you kind of looked at her back, you would also be able to see that in her legs here, she is actually starting to go in ways, but she's not a six. And the reason why she's not a six is because she actually does have condition on these points, just not a lot of it. So this cow is a six and a half. So six and a half here, 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 and then also here as well. The six would start to get more, this V actually becomes more defined. And because she has got a little bit here, what you will find again with these under condition cows down here is that they will start to actually go in. So this cow has a six and a half. So if I have a wee look at this cow here, if I start on her spine, see it started to bridge. So instantly, you know, she is, I'm saying probably like a five and a half, six. Here, her short ribs, and you might be able to see it here, but I can feel those quite easily. I still can't really feel the individual notches though. If you look at her hips, they are quite sharp. The rump is really dished. And see how pronounced that V is around her tail head. See, I can stick my whole hand in on both sides. And her pins, like I can start to see, so cow's pins actually look like little t um, taps. So when they get in low condition, kind of like a five and below, this will actually look like a 
like a tap head. So, you know, I would say that this cow is a six, but I would say just a six. If I could feel those notches, if that was a little bit sharper, you know, and if this kind of just this area here was just a little bit more pronounced, I think it's because she's got the more cover here. So, but I'm saying just six. So you could go five and a half. But either way, probably one of the lighter in the herd today. Now, it's very clear here that this cow has a lot more condition than the others we've been looking at. So just visually. Now, you wouldn't see many cows that have this much condition on them at pre-calving. But the reason why these older cows do is because they actually stayed at home. So they've been preferentially fed and it's quite clear. So when I look at this, you know, her spine, nice and flat. There is no way I can feel her spine in there. Same with the short ribs. She's actually, like, I can't feel those at all. You could probably see a little bit easier on this side. You know, I can't even feel them when I, pre when I press. Her hips have got good fat cover over them. You can see on here. And see what I mean about the area between the hip bone here and then the tail head. So she started to fill out. You can see it a bit better on this side. And then here, she's got so much condition on her tail head, she's actually got rolls. And this is probably a really good cow to have a look at her back in terms of how much condition she's got in her thigh here. So this is a cow you could probably split hairs on, but my biggest recommendation on scoring is go with your first gut instinct because otherwise it takes too long. Now you can condition cows really, really fast. So when they're being um, taken through the race, you can pretty much do it in a big circular motion. So start here, short ribs, over the hip bones, down to the tail head. I wouldn't recommend you stick your hand down here when there's another cow close up behind, but again, you can watch her as she walks away. So I would actually call this cow an eight and a half. She is in pretty good condition. Um, I'm really hesitant about calling animals nines because you do have to look on the flip side or think about the flip side and think about what a two would look like. And so to me, I mean, if this cow continues to put on condition by weaning or mating, even mating to be honest, uh, I would call her a nine, but definitely a solid eight and a half. Now it's pretty clear that she has some good condition on her, but you can kind of see already that she's not, what well, doesn't have as much condition as that, that eight and a half that we saw, but I still recommend touching her. So we've got spine, I can't feel that spine, same with the short ribs. You can see there's nice cover over the hip bones here. She's starting to fill out in this area. But the reason why I wouldn't call her at eight and a half is you can see she doesn't have as much as that last cow around her tail. So she's definitely got enough. And I don't know if you can see this, but she's not as full in the back. So this is why I would call this cow an eight. The content I've covered in the video today has been a combination of my own experience plus information from the Beef Cow Body Condition Scoring Booklet available on the Beef and Am New Zealand Knowledge Hub. This book is great. It covers the ideal scores at different time points plus some of the scores that I haven't been able to show you on the video today. So you can either print this off or you can actually order it as well. Now I really hope you've enjoyed the video, I've enjoyed doing it for you and now have the motivation to go out and body condition score your herd with confidence.